Today we're working on the 99 Ram 2500. Got some generic uh, replacement headlights here off of Amazon. However, when I tried to put some better bulbs in, unfortunately I broke the little plastic retaining ring. So I've just made the decision that we're going to go ahead and do a proper HID retrofit. Before we get started, let's uh, look at the tools we're going to need. So small quarter inch ratchet, a couple 10 millimeter sockets, uh, short and deep. Got a little U-joint, a couple small extensions, and I'm going to use my little DeWalt 20 volt XR uh, on this driver wherever I can to speed things up. Now this one down here is going to be a little bit hard to get to. There's a couple options. You can come at it from the bottom. Uh, you can actually come at it from the top. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Coming at this bolt from the top, you can do it a couple ways. You can use your U-joint a couple little extensions you can get down in there on it just like that and back it out or you can take a quarter inch ratchet and your long socket and come at it like so this is a little bit more difficult here so I recommend using the U-joints and extension socket and you can just start working loose there. That's what we're after right there. It's a bit tight of a reach down in here from the top. Otherwise, just let it drop out the bottom and uh, catch it on the floor there. You just gotta be careful if you've got a block heater. This right here will uh, it'll tear up your hand pretty good. The other few fasteners here are pretty self-explanatory. Just come in. This one right here. It's a little tough to get to, but if you're careful, you can get on it like that. You might just have to bend your plastic bumper trim down a hair. And there it goes. This rubber weather stripping kind of seals out the uh, headlight gap to the grill. You will have to pull it out right here. It's a little plastic clip. Just wiggle it back and forth, but be sure you don't break it. And that weather stripping piece is also attached a couple more places as you come down the actual metal there. Just make sure you pop those three out. You've got the three bolts removed and this rubber weather stripping pulled back. You should be able to just pull straight out. Now, one thing you'll have to keep in mind is that the metal stud that grabs in there is uh, pretty tight. I'll uh, show you here in just a second after I get it out. Now, as you can see there, I was fighting this thing pretty hard. And what, you, what I want you to see is, you see that little metal stud there? Kind of looks like a screw. It's not really a screw. It's just like a metal ribbed stud. And uh, the portion on the right attaches to the headlight itself. And then the portion, portion on the left, that's just some kind of little spring clip that it grabs into. That's uh, just popped into the frame of the truck there. The uh, body panel. So... That's what you're going to fight to pull loose. Uh, one thing you can do is get a screwdriver and just get you a long skinny flathead. And if it doesn't come loose, just work it loose like that. And that's what I was just doing. So before you know it, you got to pop loose. You can twist and remove your running light bulb. I had already removed my headlight bulb. And you can see that's that metal rib stud there that's going to give you trouble trying to pull it out of there. Now what I was trying to say earlier is on at least these aftermarket headlights and probably the rest of the OEM Dodge lights, they have a retaining ring here for the 9004 series bulb and when I was piddling around with that some of the little retaining teeth broke out and uh, I got tired of trying to find an exact one of these to fit back on these aftermarket headlights so we're just going to pull the lenses off and do a proper retrofit with some HIDs. I showed you all removing the passenger side headlight. The driver's side one's the same way. It has the rubber weather stripping, and three fasteners, and the metal ribbed stud. However, be very careful, at least on some of these aftermarket headlights. It might not be made as well. Uh, as you can see here, I've broken off one of the mounting tabs. It goes back on like that but that shouldn't be hard to repair with some uh, JB Weld. Get a nice fillet right there. 
on the underside and then I fill in the top side. We'll be back in business. So just be careful when you're pulling these out because these can snap off with the unique way that these headlights have to drop down and into that, uh, that opening. Next up, we'll take the headlights inside. We're actually gonna have to heat them in the oven. The reason behind that is around the perimeter of these lenses, there's a rubber adhesive sealant. We got the oven at 220. I went ahead and pulled off these rubber weather stripping pieces. They were just held on by double-sided tape, so that won't be hard to reattach. And you'll also want to have you some gloves and probably some small flat-bedded screwdrivers or a little putty knife or something to assist with prying these apart. So we're going to get them in the oven. Still got the oven heated up, so we're going to go ahead and drop this oven in. One thing to note here, and take that oven mitt off, might want to remove these rubber rings around the back side and the little plastic retaining ring just to, just to make sure we don't melt or deform those. Now that the lens is off the housing, I'll go ahead and remove this little metal, metal reflector shield that is in there. Uh, that's designed for obviously a halogen bulb. You can see right there, just a little bitty Phillips head screw. We've got it removed. And now we're left with this nice empty housing here. All right, now this is a very generic uh, Amazon special projector. Let's take it apart, get it out of the box, and look at how that's going to work. So there is the projector. Now the way this will work is there's three little Phillips screws here with the uh, bulb retainer uh, clip interface piece. We'll pull those off and then this little threaded portion on the back of the reflector bowl will fit down inside of the halogen headlight bulb hole in the back of the reflector housing on the headlight. And then you're able to uh, screw this down, get it nice and tight. Uh, it comes with some silicone washers to make sure everything's sealed up and get a good seal on the back, back side of the headlight there. And then another thing to check out is our shroud. So this is just to make it look a little nicer. 
And this shroud here will actually go over the projector. So all you'll be able to see really is this chrome shroud and the glass lens there of the projector. It'll give you a nice finished look inside of your headlight instead of looking at that big piece of ugliness. A word of caution here. Uh, you want to try to keep everything as clean as possible. I'm just putting this together right now to make sure it's going to fit up correctly how I want to fit it up. And before we put this together for the final time, uh, we'll put some um, latex or uh, nitrile gloves on, make sure they don't have any powder on them, and uh, give all this a good wipe down using a uh, lint-free microfiber and some uh, rubbing alcohol or IPA. All right, let's remove these three screws that hold this little metal piece on that interfaces with the bulb retainer clip. All right, we've got that removed. Remove this retaining nut and get a general idea of how this is going to set down inside there. So the solenoid will be on the bottom. We'll figure out how we're going to tidy this up later. As you can see there, kind of a rough idea of how it's going to go in. The threaded portion goes in through the hole back there. Now if we look at the back of the headlight here, you can see we've got a rather large hole around the threads. And if we were to just put that nut on, well, it doesn't really have anything to bite down on, right? So the good news is they come with all kinds of little washers, adapters, whatever you want to call them, and that'll slide in there, fill up that space, and serve as a nice washer for that nut to tighten down against. All right, so something I want to show you all real quick. It came out here in the garage, as we talked about earlier. You have this little washer piece, plate, whatever you want to call it, that fits down in here. And it gives that uh, nut on the back side of the projector bowl, you know, something to grab onto. Now, what I did here, Hopefully the GoPro will focus. I took a very small 3 32nd bit. And as I drop this in, and it's going to set vertical. This, uh, so bear with me. There we go. So as this sits in there, uh, the little notches, they're vertical. I just added a little bitty hole there. That's going to be for our uh, solenoid wires, the positive and negative, that allow us to use high beam to pass through there. So. That's all I wanted to show. I just uh, kind of made a half a circle there. Almost used my bit as a uh, end mill and uh, kind of got some of that material off and that'll allow us to pass the wire through and not chafe the wire on this. And now we're going to actually have to trim the shroud of the projector. See, I made some marks here and here. If you look, it's not really lining up centered line to the hole in the back of the headlight housing so we just need this shroud to set a little bit lower on the bottom of the headlight housing here so we're going to trim a little bit of this off the shroud is now cut i just followed the lines that are already built into it using a little hacksaw blade As you can see now it'll fit down in there a lot more concentrically to the hole that's in the back of the headlight and once everything's installed, you really won't even be able to tell where you made the cut. Now that this shroud is cut, we can attach it to the projector using some of these small screws, little Phillips heads that come with the kit. And the way that's going to work is The shroud onto the projector. You can see there's four holes. Get them lined up and screw them in. Just 
just be careful, don't strip it out because it is just plastic. doing I used a little small silicone washer uh, before that is the washer with the little notches in it As you can see we got our wire passing through and now we're doing our best to tighten down this little lock ring that they included it is pretty hard to get it, the thread started just take your time don't cross thread it and you'll be able to slowly get this tightened down a little tip or trick using a set of uh, snap ring pliers to come in and act as a spanner wrench and be able to tighten this thing up snug we got it tightened down it's pretty solid in there that silicone ring actually acts as a bit of a lock washer if you know what i'm talking about but you want to get that nut there threaded on enough that this piece of the reflector ball that is threaded it is protruding up above it and I'll show you why because for the HID bulb to be retained we'll have to reinstall this little piece with the wire clip that holds the bulb in place And that's what it looks like with the bulb retainer installed. Now we've got our H1 HID bulb. I'm going to slide it down into the projector. And then just come in with the wire clip that holds it in place. So it might be a little hard to see, but we're out here back at the truck. It's nighttime. I have done my best to hook up all of the wiring, such as the HID ballast. And you're also going to have, at least on these older trucks, you're going to have to have some type of a conversion from the H1 bulb to the 9004 uh, socket. So we're going to try to at least turn them on, make sure everything's functioning, and get a general idea of if the beam is going to be level or not. Alright, looks like we do have some power. That is good. And wow, look at that cutoff line. Some nice blue, purple flickering. Now we're going to have to work on getting it level. So we're going to mount up the headlight into the truck uh, with obviously the lens cover off and then we'll just check our uh, rotation alignment all that good stuff but so far I'm liking what I see I just put two bolts back in and I'm gonna get the newer truck out of the way and we're gonna see how it looks and adjust the angle and alignment So it looks like we have the alignment almost spot on. You can see how we can adjust it there. But using the curb across the street as a guideline, that looks pretty much it, like we nailed it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now what we'll do is take the headlight back off, remove it from the truck, We'll make sure we lock this down nice and tight and uh, then we'll get the lens put back on 
So it looks like we pretty much nailed the alignment. So I don't think we'll really have to adjust this much. Uh, if we did, we can just come in right here, adjust it left and right, which I'll do now. You can see you still have a little bit of play, but using the curve across the street, that's pretty much exactly where it needs to be. So now we'll just need to remove the headlight from the truck, disconnect the wiring, and uh, we'll make sure we clean everything really nice before we work to put the lens back on and get it back in the oven. Now we've got some of the butyl rubber sealant. Uh, it's pretty thick as it comes off the roll. So I'm slicing it in two long ways. And we'll just lay this in to the sealant channel of the headlight, tuck that in, run it all the way around, and then we'll get the lens put back on. All right, we've got the sealant running through the channel all the way around. And this stuff, you can actually just roll it out, make it real thin, stretch it, get it like you want, just like a piece of silly putty. So, roll it out, stretch it, make it fit down in there, otherwise it's a little bit too thick and you won't be able to get the lens on properly. And the last step before putting it in the oven, get some clamps. Uh, these are some cheapo plastic ones from Harbor Freight, I think. And clamp it wherever you can, just hold this down as the glue softens up. It'll just bring the two halves together a little bit better. And make sure you get a good uh, watertight seal and you won't have any moisture problems inside of the headlight. And after it comes out of the oven, as it cools, make sure you have some clamps on it. And let's take these clamps off. This is cooled off. And there's our finished product. We'll get these mounted up on the truck and get maybe one or two more shots of that outside. But uh, that's what you're looking for.